All right, so hello everyone and welcome today to another edition of Spray and Pray 1000's The Verdict. I am, of course, who else? Not Spray and Pray 1000. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm in a good mood today. It's actually a really great day out. I got to go outside. Uh, I know I make it sound like I only go for a walk like a dog every so often, which is pretty funny. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one of those good old days. And what better way to spend one of these good old days than to talk about a game I actually really enjoyed playing, uh, especially one that ties together a huge series so nicely. And today we're going to be talking about Kingdom Hearts 3. And I know this verdict almost couldn't be later. Uh, there's really no reason I delayed Kingdom Hearts 3's verdict other than just I was lazy. So, you know, I take it for what you will, I guess, because it, it kind of just happens or it doesn't. But Kingdom Hearts 3 is an action-adventure game set in the Kingdom Hearts universe, which is a crossover of Final Fantasy and Square Enix-related uh, IPs alongside uh, Disney-related franchises and movies. And the first thing I guess I should add as an addendum to that is that basically, ever since Dream Drop Distance, and especially in Kingdom Hearts 3... There are basically no Square Enix characters, except besides Moogles and the original Kingdom Hearts cast. There, there aren't even really the World Ends With You characters in this game. And this, it, that, that could be a negative point. Um, you could probably see that as a negative, given that they were pretty big characters in the previous games, taking up, you know, good portions of the middle and, and early stories of various games. But... It is what it is. Uh, Kingdom Hearts has kind of moved beyond that for better or for worse, and I'm not going to get too in, deep, in depth into that. But other than that, it stars Sora, who is the main character of the numbered games and a couple of the spin off games, as he tries to defeat Master Xehanort's plan to bring about another Keyblade War to return the world to the way it was. And it's a fairly typical JRPG story. I think part of the reason why it's very memorable is because Kingdom Hearts is a very memorable franchise. And it has a lot of very unique, uh, fun style gameplay. People have been playing it for a long time. And so because of that, you know, it, it kind of ends up being this game that people have a, a long memory with and a long uh, lasting love for. And Kingdom Hearts is still fun, even in this day and age, in my opinion. The gameplay is pretty fast paced. We have a couple of different changes from Kingdom Hearts 2, which was the last outing in this similar capacity. We don't use the command deck like we used in uh, Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance. We instead opt back to the typical attack magic item and uh, so on that you can use whenever you want. There's shortcuts again, but now you have multiple shortcuts, which is a massive improvement. You can have different setups depending on different environments. You can now freely traverse the environment, running up big walls diving off of things, long jumps. Uh, the flow motion also returns from Dream Drop, but in a, in a limited capacity, which is still pretty good. I think that Kingdom Hearts 3, in a lot of ways, it does it with the story, um, but it also does it with the gameplay, tries to tie together everything that's happened in the Kingdom Hearts universe. So, for instance, we have... Uh, a lot of returning gameplay elements, like I said, flow motion, we have uh, the typical magic and whatnot. We have summons that come back, but as links. And it's, it's, it's very interesting and fun to see all this stuff kind of come together. We have references to pretty much every previous game. We have story. I mean, obviously the story is nothing but old references and, and conclusions. And I think maybe we should start there after we, uh, once we, uh, well, I think we have established a pretty good rapport. Uh, with how far we've come. The story of Kingdom Hearts 3, like I said, is Sora and his friends versus uh, Master Xehanort's 13 darknesses as they try to assemble their seven lights to fight against it. And essentially what the game boils down to is the typical kind of uh, plot that you have in a Kingdom Hearts game. You travel various Disney worlds, which now includes Pixar, since Pixar has been acquired by Disney since the last major game. And that's actually kind of one of the big drawing points, because most of the various worlds in this game are from Pixar. There are a couple returning worlds, which is pretty cool. There's a couple jokes hidden here or there, a lot of references to the old games and how long this game took to be made versus, you know, how shortly after Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop and Kingdom Hearts 2, it takes place in the timeline, uh, which is pretty funny. It's nice to have meta humor like that, uh, which is pretty cool in a game like this. 
while it does take itself seriously, it also is, you know, it can it can handle some jokes and some banter, which is nice. Um, but other than that, the story is, is fairly straightforward. But it does have a lot of tying up of various plot lines and elements that have been happening. So, for instance, Aqua's story is tied up in this game. Roxas's story is tied up. And it's actually very cathartic and very rewarding when you play these games that they just sort of naturally have these fun, interesting, and, and well-done conclusions. And I think that that's part of the reward of playing this game, part of the... I don't want to say the word experience because it's a buzzword, but part of the fulfillment of playing this game is that you have this nice cathartic ending for so many different characters and so many plot lines that have unfolded across, you know, however many years this franchise has been running. And I think that's the first thing to take note of is they do a great job with that. And I, I really like that. And, and I mean, granted, most of it really comes into shape at the end. Um, but that's totally fine, actually, and I think that that's kind of how it should be. There are some things that sort of lead up to the grand conclusion, and the best thing I could probably link it to is, like, Mass Effect 3, even, you know, even, and I'm not to say the quality of the ending is bad, but Mass Effect 3, you sort of spend a good chunk of the game wrapping up various plot points. Uh, I can't really remember a lot of them. Like, the Krogan genocide was one of them, and the Geth Corian drama was one of them, and it's kind of the same thing here. We spend a good chunk of the game doing various other things in the different worlds. Each of the 13 darknesses kind of plays a role in each of the worlds. Especially some of them being major villains from previous games. You have your Pixar friends to help you out in various situations. A few of the worlds are continuations. Uh, I don't particularly want to give too much away. But that in and of itself is pretty cool. And ultimately it leads to this grand conclusion where we have to fight against Master Xehanort. I did like the ending of this game a lot, though, even if it is pretty cutscene heavy, so I guess that would probably be one thing I would warn you about, is like most Kingdom Hearts games, a lot of Kingdom Hearts is cutscene watching. I, and if you're, Especially if you're just, you know, not playing on a difficulty where you need to grind, a lot of Kingdom Hearts can be cutscene watching, especially how in-depth the story is for that game. Kingdom Hearts 2 had about an hour's worth of epilogue. Kingdom Hearts 3 is a bit nicer, uh, because it has a, a bunch of big boss fights at the end, so it, te it does technically have more gameplay broken up. But that is probably my favorite part of the story of Kingdom Hearts 3, is that we get so many good conclusions. All these characters, which we played throughout a bunch of different years, kind of have their grand resolutions. And I do actually really like that about this game a lot. Now, on the other hand, the gameplay of Kingdom Hearts 3 is... A bit more of a mixed bag. Like I said before, they have a lot of cool references. You have Keyblades you can equip. One new big thing that I do like is that you could have, instead of Drive Forms, which it's kind of a little bit of a bummer that there's no Drive Forms in this game. Uh, instead of Drive Forms, now each Keyblade has a unique transformation similar to Form Shifts from Birth by Sleep. Where it was more based on the actions that you did based on your command deck. In Kingdom Hearts 3... It's based off the actions that you perform in combat. So attacking a lot with a Keyblade will allow you to form shift your Keyblade. Attacking a lot with magic will allow you to use Grand Magic, which is basically a bigger finishing version of the spells. Um, and so on and so forth. On, from time to time as well, your teammates Donald and Goofy, and maybe some of the various Disney characters, uh, well other Disney characters I guess, will throw in various attacks that you could do. And it lets the combat always be varied based on world to world and what you have equipped and it's also cool that when you have a form shifted keyblade you're actually able to equip multiple keyblades in this game up to three that you could switch between at any time and, and use them however you want so if you have a certain type of keyblade that you prefer for certain types of enemies you could use it if you have a form shifted keyblade you activate the form shift and you switch to another keyblade you'll be able to maintain that form-shifted Keyblade in stasis until you actually need it, which is a pretty cool thing. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that you would probably see in a more, I don't want to say in-depth, because Kingdom Hearts is very in-depth with what it does, but it's something that you would probably see in a more hardcore RPG, and it's nice that they have these kind of elements in Kingdom Hearts. I think that that really plays a huge role in the game. Um, in terms of keeping it varied, allowing you to have a whole bunch of cool stuff. 
And that's really what I think is a good benefit, is that you have a lot of options in this game. Um, I guess to juxtapose that, and, and having a lot of options is never a bad thing. In fact, having a lot of options on how you can go about things is what makes a lot of games fun, in my opinion. But the problem with Kingdom Hearts 3, if you want to call it a problem, I, I guess I kind of will because it kind of affects the game a lot, is that this game is radically easy. It is a very easy game. It is, without a doubt, the easiest Kingdom Hearts game put out. And in all honesty, I would say that Kingdom Hearts 3 kind of follows Final Fantasy XV in being two of the easiest Square Enix games I've ever played. And especially given that they were both, you know, roughly developed around the same time as each other, it seems to be like a major tonal shift that they want these games to be heavily accessible to the point that I played on proud mode. And while I didn't die, I did use Koopo coins, which are basically free one-ups that allow you to come back after dying. Um, so technically, I think I used maybe two or three of them in the playthrough. Even still... Two or three deaths is, is roughly nothing in a Kingdom Hearts game, especially on, on the hardest difficulty, because there is no critical mode in this game, at least as of the time that I played it, which was granted about a month and a half ago. Um, there are no... There is no critical mode, which has kind of been a, a major staple of Kingdom Hearts since, I want to say, I think every game has had it, but Chain of Memories, and maybe not 358 over 2, and Recoded. I forget, Recode has a, had a different difficulty slider. I forget that game, though. And since they didn't remake that game, and not that I really miss it in particular, I'm okay with it. Um, but on the flip side of it all, Kingdom Hearts 3 is, is a fun game nonetheless. It's just a very easy game. So a lot of the different things that I mentioned, such as being able to flip between different keyblades and all this other stuff, you don't even really need to do it half the time. If you just do some basic dodging and you just, like, you know, don't face check everything, you should be good. There's also one type of extra attack, like I mentioned before, with form shifts and friend and friend attacks where your friends will help you out. There's also another type of attack called uh, uh, theme attractions. And what the job of them is basically to kind of emulate Disney park rides. And, like, there's a pirate ship one you can summon. There's a, a water rafting one. There's a blaster uh, hover cart one you can use. They're cool, but the problem with it is that they kind of are very flow-breaking, I guess I want to say. They're not, they're, they come up pretty much all the time. And they just, I kind of stopped using them, even on the hardest difficulty, just because I said that they just take too much time, you're not invincible when using them, but that's not really why I didn't like them. And they just are too flow-breaking, they just don't feel like they really mesh well with the game. It feels like something they just kind of put in, just because, you know, Disney's in the game. And it is, it's helpful damage, I mean, you could use it if you want, I opted not to, but... Yeah, that's, that's generally what I, I think about those. And that kind of leads into my ultimate point about all these additional attacks, is that they appear all the time. And I really mean it. You could be in combat for as little as one second, and you'll have maybe one or two of these pop up. So by the it, it barely even lets you begin to use a lot of your normal attacks and gameplay, which is... I mean, I guess that you could argue that this is good because it keeps things varied and you can use it as needed. And you're not, like, just praying that sometimes you, your teammates might help. But there's always some extra thing to do in the combat. It makes the combat very flashy, very showy. There's always... A, it's, it's like a spectacle eye candy a little bit. And while the basic combat is still fun and interesting, and there are certainly lots of enemies to fight in this game, it, there's no shortage of stuff that you could do and fight with. And I like that, but at the same time, I have to also say that it's kind of... I guess by the time you get towards the latter half of the game, it gets a little annoying sometimes when you have constant pop-ups. And while it is nice, you could toggle through them, I guess, so that's not bad. They do really go overboard with them. They, they spared no expense in making sure that there were a million different things you could do at any given moment. And it also just overall contributes to the game being very easy for the most part. There's only maybe a few sections of the game that are actually even reasonably challenging... Because for the you're basically always able to manipulate yourself into a good position where you could heal, you could use a, a form shift, 
someone else can heal you, you could throw an item, you could do whatever, and it's very easy to always stay on top, which is good, but it also makes the game incredibly trivial and easy for the most part. And this is all on proud mode, by the way. So any any anything else is just even easier than that. Enemies are less aggressive and do less damage. Um, on top of the fact that you have the typical stuff. Now, on the flip side of this, it is kind of cool because you do kind of get a lot of things to do, which is always good. You're not just button mashing. You know, a lot of people say that Kingdom Hearts kind of comes down to button mashing, which is partially true. Uh, especially if you're not playing on anything too high. Uh, you can pretty much ignore blocking. And it is nice that a lot of things kind of just became typical gameplay elements. Like, you no longer have to unlock dodge roll. You no longer have to unlock block. A lot of things are just unlocked by default. Uh, they kind of got the general gist of what you need to do basic combat down. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that after a point, you're almost never even doing basic combat, really. Outside of trying to maybe build up your keyblade or whatnot, which is fine. All in all... Gameplay of Kingdom Hearts is very fun, it's fast-paced, there's a lot of it, but it's very easy, it's very flashy, it's filled with a lot of side things, so maybe that's a big a big thing, maybe it's not, uh, I guess that's really up to the, the beholder. Um, graphically, I guess since that kind of goes hand-in-hand -hand with gameplay, I don't really think I need to say anything about the graphics of Kingdom Hearts, it looks, I don't want to say hyper-realistic, because it's not hyper-realistic, but it looks very cartoony it looks very polished it, it's kind of like the next step of unreal which is what i like because after a certain point a lot of games tended to look the same this game really does look very nice there's a lot of cool effects it performs pretty well for basic playstation hardware and i do like that now that said um kingdom hearts uh, has always kind of looked decent for the time period it's been in for the console it's been on which is you know I, I, I like that a lot this game kind of goes a step above and and well you know i'm not that big on graphics a lot it is nice to see that they put in the extra mile and they put in all the extra effort to make it look very well and uh, that's that's good i mean there's there's not too much to really say about that i think and just looking at it you could tell that a lot of these pixar characters like from frozen and Tangled, they look basically as they do in the movie. And one of the funny parts that I actually always want to say about this is that they more or less... I actually got um, YouTube content IDs because the they there were a couple scenes without Sora in it from the movie Tangled, or in this game it's the Kingdom of Corona. And they basically assumed that I had uploaded the movie, which is pretty hilarious, although also pretty terrifying. And I guess to give that credit to the game, I'll, I'll, I'll convert that into credit for the game. It looks so true to source material as compared to the other, you know, Disney movies, which aren't necessarily 3D, except for, what is it, like Pirates of the Caribbean? Which, obviously, is live action, so there's going to be a clear distinction between that and, you know, the, King, the PS2 graphics at the time. I'll give that credit to the game. The game looks really nice. It looks really convincing. It's able to fool YouTube system. So if you could fool YouTube system, I mean, obviously they put a lot of time into it. That's that's pretty damn cool. I, I like that. Well, I, I don't like that they hit me with that, but, you know, whatever. Um, other than that, though, uh, the sound is nice. You know, the presentation's good. The main meat of this game, mostly, though, is that it appeals to people who have been fans of Kingdom Hearts since day one. Since, or at least have played a vast majority, if not all of the other major games. And, uh, you know, some of the games are kind of whatever. You kind of just need to know about 358 over 2 and the, and the ultimate plot of it. Kind of, Recoded might be the only game that doesn't really get mentioned that much. I think it gets mentioned maybe like once or twice or something like that. Because that was kind of a, the definition of a spin-off game. Um, it has its ties, though, which is still cool. And I think that that's kind of ultimately... What I like about Kingdom Hearts 3 is that, and, and, all, and just Kingdom Hearts in general, is that no game in this franchise actually felt like it was just a, a complete one-off. Everything seems to get represented in here. There's obviously representatives from the various games like Birth by Sleep, uh, one, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Dream Drop directly ties into the opening in this game's plot. Uh, with the power of waking being a major plot element in this game as it was in Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. Um, Chain of Memories gets represented a little bit less. 
you know, having shown off the organization in Castle Oblivion. And we get all these nice things just congealed together. It's a nice ceiling to the plot. And while they obviously leave it open that they may or may not continue the Kingdom Hearts story, which it heavily is implied that they will, it's at least nice to know that this whole series, which is called the Dark Seeker Saga, which spans these eight or so games, concludes it's nice. Unlike some other franchises like Assassin's Creed or, or maybe God of War or something where there's games that just kind of feel like they exist to exist, this game, it feels like every game played a big, or at least sizable role in making sure that, it, or in making the, the story feel complete and fully rounded. And while it might not have always felt like that as time was going on with these different games coming out, it does feel like there was an ultimate goal in mind, and it's pretty decent the way that it concludes. So ultimately, what would I give Kingdom Hearts 3? Well, taking into account that it does kind of require that you have played the previous games, and even though they do throw in a nice little intro movie, I guess you could argue that if you really cared enough, you would play. You would have played the original games already, especially given that they re-released them like two or three times. I think once for each of the major games up until that point on the PS3, and then again they re-released everything uh, twice on the PS4 with the 1.5 plus 2.5 and 2.8, and then the entire collection of the stories so far. It well, that is out there. I guess I can't fault it too much because you wouldn't go into Mass Effect 3 not knowing anything about the story. You wouldn't go into a good other franchise ending game, or not franchise ending, but you know, story concluding games without playing the, the previous games. It, it kind of doesn't make any sense, right? Like you wouldn't watch the third act of a movie and not have watched the other two and be confused. I mean, I guess that's just, that yeah, would be kind of silly, I think. So I, I guess you could argue that. I think maybe they could have done a little bit better of a job um, recapping it though, I get that to recap everything would probably be like 40 minutes or an hour long movie, which, you know, again, would probably be a detriment. Maybe they could have had like a little playable movie demo. Like you could replay some of the key moments really quickly, really briefly, uh, just to kind of expand on it more than just a movie. Um, but other than that story is pretty good. I think that it ties together a lot of these plot lines nicely. It's it's what most people have been looking forward to. And while it is cutscene heavy, it is, you know, Kingdom Hearts. That, that's kind of always been the thing. If you look back on a lot of the older Kingdom Hearts games, especially the main ones, they have very heavy story. Um, so that doesn't really bother me that much. Gameplay, I think, might have the most faults, being that it's very easy... You know, nothing really ma major is happening. Nothing bad, per se. Um, but at the same time, it, it's very showy, flashy. I feel like they definitely want to cram in as much stuff as they could to appeal to the whole Disney aesthetic and the Disney feel. So you have these theme park rides, which are cool. There's a couple of them that are used in the game um, that are really interesting and, and cool, and they tie together with the whole theme of bosses, but maybe that's what they should have been used for, that, that you could summon these big attractions just for bosses, and it would kind of make a little more sense, it would make them a little more special than summoning them constantly throughout the game, um, which, which kind of just renders it a little bit bland. But otherwise, the game is a typical Kingdom Hearts game, which is always fun and interesting, and I always enjoy that, because Kingdom Hearts is, is a fun game at its core, even when you take away like a good portion of the story elements, like if you're doing grinding or if you're trying to maximize your character and get the best weapons and whatnot, it is still a fun game at its core, and I like that a lot about it. Now that said, Kingdom Hearts could be harder. They could have a little bit more meat to it and maybe just add a couple extra things to you know really spice it up. But ultimately i'm going to give kingdom heart and obviously the graphics and everything gets a good uh, gets a really high score actually for me because it does look really nice and they did do a great job with that to make sure that this looks like a next gen game although at this point we're already knee deep in the next gen uh but granted given that this game has been in production or at least been in existence since around 2011 or 2012 when the original P what was it the ps3 and the xbox 360 were running out of time I give it credit for that. So, what would I ultimately give Kingdom Hearts 3? I'm going to give Kingdom Hearts 3 a 93 out of 100. 
And like I said, I mean, I kind of just explained why. But like I said, story, maybe they could have fleshed out a little more for newcomers. But other than that, the fulfillment part is the big payoff of this game. As is any trilogy, uh, as is any series. You want to know how it ends. You want to see that everything that you did was kind of worth it, even if it's bittersweet. And I can think of games that do have pretty bittersweet endings that it was a fulfilling game to pay off, like Eternal Sonata, for instance. And I think they could have done something like that. I think the gameplay is really what hampers it a little bit more because, uh, you know, I mean, they could have had things be a little more special. They could have had things be a little more spread out. Uh, I do like that they try to mix up the gameplay for each of the different worlds, which is cool. Um, and that's kind of it. I did enjoy seeing this series come to a conclusion. It's been a game series I remember coming out as a kid and playing later, you know, as I got older. But at the bare minimum, I mean, I'm glad to see it come to a decent conclusion. Now, if they continue it, and, you know, I'd, I'd like to at least imagine that if and when they continue it, they have a good idea for what they want to do with it. It's, you know, not just, oh, well, we want to make Kingdom Hearts again because it's more money. That idea is fine, but it's it works best when coupled with, well, we want to make money and we have a good idea for what we want to do with it. That's how I feel like good games come about. And this is one of those instances of where we could have good games that make a lot of money and are good. So that's what I'm hoping for from Kingdom Hearts 4 or whatever it's going to be. And I actually do appreciate it. So that's it for Kingdom Hearts 3. And I hope you guys go out and pick it up of anything because Kingdom Hearts is really fun. I actually do like it a lot. And without a doubt, this has been a good game. And it's, it's a great way to start off 2019, by the way, even though at this point we're almost a third of the way into it. But uh, I'm Spring Pro 1000, and I will see you guys next time on The Verdict.